Hello there. Uh, this is uh, you're listening to a mini episode of uh, That's Entertainment. I am uh, your pop culture maven, Jeff Malone, and uh, this is one of the uh, that's uh, that's what what this is one of those what's Jeff's what's Jeff watching mini episodes of That's Entertainment. Um, you, uh, on the full length episodes of That's Entertainment, Aunt Beth, my co-host Aunt Beth and I discuss various pop culture topics according to our unique format, which involves the three F's, first favorite and forever. But on the mini episodes, it's typically just me talking and they're a little different, but still fun, hopefully, and still, uh, focused around movies and tv and music and the like and all, all the rest of it anyway on the so the, the what's jeff watching mini episodes uh you know are just kind of like uh, a way to get everyone caught up on what's going on on the screens uh you know stuff that we haven't had an opportunity to dive deeply in fully on a full-length episode because there's a whole lot that we're watching and, you know, I just kind of felt, you know, like, I'd like to get some of my thoughts about these shows and movies and what have you off my chest and throw them out into the podcast ether. And if anyone of our listeners uh, would like to listen to those thoughts, then hooray. Here we go. So, yeah, so this is the 17th edition. And uh, at a certain point, this has kind of become what's Jeff watching and also what is Aunt Beth watching, but Jeff tells you what Aunt Beth is watching because she uh, may have sent me a text message so I can relay her thoughts as well. So this episode, uh, being an episode that is arriving in your podcast feeds in October, is going to focus on fall TV. You know, folks, even in 2024, even with all the streaming options available, to, to watch your programs and even the all the fact that all the traditional TV networks and the cable networks and the streaming networks are premiering new shows throughout the year pretty much, fall TV is still a thing. And honestly, I think it was more a thing this fall than it has been in quite a while, uh, partly because last year we had the writer's strike I think it recently ended, and but the actor strike was still going on, so uh, the fall TV season was a little more muted than usual, so we, we've definitely got to bounce back compared to last year, but I also feel like there's an appetite or, or push towards some, uh, some traditional TV formats, and, uh, you know, there's some... There's some people who are like, I don't think network TV, traditional TV is quite dead yet. Yes, there's more cord cutters than ever, but you know what? Streaming is uh, is not the utopia we were, some of us were anticipating. You know, you gotta subscribe to a hundred different streaming services now if you want to watch everything that you like. Uh... And, uh, you know, maybe we went too far in the direction of big budget, prestige, TV, and now let's, let, let's, uh, keep it simple. And, uh, you know, I, I like some of the results of that. We'll see if this becomes a long-term trend, but anyway, yeah, so we're going to focus on, uh, this What's Jeff Watching mini episode about, uh, some of the new fall TV shows I've been checking out and uh, also what Aunt Beth has been watching and because she sent me a tes- text message and I'll go ahead and uh, read you that before I get into uh, what I've got to say. So here is the info that Aunt Beth relayed to me. Oops. She said, uh, you can quote me. So I'll go ahead and uh, read exactly what she wrote here she said every fall i read the fall preview tv guide and check off the shows that sound interesting to me i give them a try and if i don't like them i don't continue watching well fortunately or maybe unfortunately 
there's six new ones that I really uh, like. Here they are, in order of the nights they air. Mondays, Rescue High Surf and Brilliant Minds. Tuesday, Murder in a Small Town and High Potential. And Thursdays, Georgie and Mandy's First Marriage and Matlock. And I'm really looking forward to St. Dennis Medical, which starts on November 12th. Along with some oldies but goodies, Survivor, anyone? I'd say my plate is quite full. Well, honestly, I think my plate might even be a little more full than Aunt Beth's. Uh, at least in, perhaps in terms of the number of shows I've tried. Although a few of them... Well, we'll see. Uh, we do have some overlap. I've So Aunt Beth uh, gave me her list in... In order of um, Sunday through Saturday. Or actually, she started on Monday, but she didn't have anything on Sunday to include. So, would she have started on Sunday if she did? Anyway, I've got my list written down in roughly the order that they premiered. Uh, So, first off, High Potential. And I think this is uh, where Aunt Beth and I both agree it's where it's at. It's aired, I guess, five episodes so far at this point. And, you know, it's uh, Caitlin Olsen as a consultant for the LAPD. I believe that's uh, that's got to be it. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I've never really been a f- super fan of mystery shows that are like the detective or the whoever it is doing the investigating has uh, some weird personality quirks but you know what if you put the if you cast the right person as a star i'll i'll pay attention to it and you know so recently i watched uh poker face on peacock because it starred natasha leone and now i'm watching high potential because it stars caitlin olsen if you're a fan of hers from uh, it's always sunny in philadelphia uh, I'd say check it out. It's certainly not uh, as uh, balls to the wall as Always Sunny is, but uh, she uh, she's not uh, sound sanded down. Let's put that this put put it that way. Uh, you, you know, there's certain things that you can't get away on ABC that you can get away with on FX, but uh, she's she's still. Uh, She's still she's still delivering what she's got, and uh, I've also been watching Agatha all along, and uh, you know that doesn't feel as as new as my other shows I've got here. I mean, because it is a spinoff after all of of WandaVision, and it's part of Marvel Cinematic Universe yet another MCU TV show. It's pretty enjoyable. There's there's some uh, it's fun to be had, and it's nice to have a a, a witch based show uh, to watch in October. Uh, the CW has been getting into the original game show game or, you know, game shows based on existing property game. Uh, so I, I checked out Scrabble, uh, hosted by Raven Simone and Trivial Pursuit hosted by, uh, LeVar Burton. I think the, these shows could use some sprucing up. Uh, I mean, if you're a Scrabble fanatic or a Trivial Pursuit fanatic, you'll probably find something to enjoy here. But you might be like, these shows are still searching for an identity. And uh, I wish them luck. Uh, oh, speaking of spinoffs, uh, we've got, and uh, and here's another one where Aunt Beth and I overlap. Uh, Georgie and Mandy's First Marriage, a spinoff of Young Sheldon, which was in itself a spinoff of The Big Bang Theory, of course. Uh, you know, basically ju- just uh, jumping in right where Young Sheldon left off. It's a little jarring that this m- switches from s- single camera for Young Sheldon and, and on to multi camera for Georgie and Mandy. Uh, but anyway, I. Um, I'm happy. I'm happy for it. I these it's 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 filling the young Sheldon size hole in my heart on Thursday nights, and I mean there's you know that that uh, I guess an omen in the the title it it says first marriage. So are they you know are they going to split up at some point? That seems to be the, the promise of. Of the show, and I mean, when we saw Georgie 
played by Jerry O'Connell on The Big Bang Theory. He he didn't appear to be married to Mandy, although at that time, I don't think Emily Osment had started to appear on Young Sheldon. So, but uh, you know the the Big Bang Theory, the Sheldon verse writers are fairly consistent about what they've set up for the these characters futures so uh you know only uh one episode has aired so far or actually well two will have aired by the time this episode releases but i've only seen the first episode so uh you know hard i can't it's not clear what they're going to do about all that at this point but uh probably going to do something uh okay uh Getting back to game shows, Amazon Prime is also getting into the game show business. Um, I just uh, started airing Are You Smarter Than a Celebrity, which is a bit of a update of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader. This one's hosted by Travis Ke- <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, folks. I had a, a piece of cracker stuck in my throat. Uh, yeah, so it, it's uh, if you didn't watch Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, it's basically the the questions on this show are at the level of grade school subjects. First through fifth grade. First grade math, second grade English, third grade science, what have you. Uh, you know, so I'm like, eh, this is pretty easy. Uh, but you know, sometimes you're like, oh, I thought that was easy, but it's been years since I thought about that subject. So, so that's that's the hook of the show. For me, the appeal of the show is the the celebrity panel that can help the contestants. On the first episode, it included Ron Funches, Nikki Glaser, Natasha Leggero, Chad Ocho Cinco, and who who was the other one? Uh, uh, Nikki Singh. That's her name, right? Uh, so you know you got you got some funny people helping out uh, with uh, with the trivia. So that's that's often an appeal for me when it comes to uh, game shows, especially when the quiz material isn't super challenging. All right, next we got a couple of possessive sitcoms, uh, Happy's Place and Papa's House, starring at some. Sitcom veterans. Happy's Place stars Reba McIntyre. She's running a bar and that she inherited from her late father. It discovers that she's got a long lost half sister she never knew about. Now they've got to share the bar because that's what Dad said in the will. It looks like this show might be entirely set at the bar for every episode. We'll see how long they sustain that. I'd imagine at some point they'll want to venture out away to other locations at some point. But uh, anyway, Reba's great. Uh, One of the co-stars is Melissa Peterman, who also was in the cast of Reba back in the early 2000s. And uh, we also just saw her recently on Young Sheldon. She played um, Mrs. Sparks, one of the, the Cooper's neighbors. Uh, so that, that was a, a decent start. I'll keep with it. Hopefully it improves. Uh, okay, next we've got Papa's House, starring Damon Wayans Sr. And look at this, Damon Wayans Jr. Uh, yeah, both sitcom veterans, uh, keeping it in the family. And, I mean, the biggest strength of this show so far is the interplay between dad and son. Their, their actual father and son off screen and they're playing father and son on screen. I think this may be the only, the second time that uh, Damon senior and junior are, are playing are drawing from real life in this way to, to play their real life relationship on screen on screen or screen. Uh, the only other time, at least that I'm aware of was happy endings, which Damon Jr. was a main cast member of, and Damon Sr. played his father in at least one episode. Uh, Maybe there are some other examples I'm not aware of. If there are, and you know any, uh, please uh, set me straight. Uh, But anyway, uh, you know, it's nice because they've got some uh, different comedic styles Despite having the the family resemblance, 
Uh, you know, it's the old school versus new school vibe. Uh, Damon uh, Jr. is has, can get a little, uh, I don't know, can play a little more sensitive, I guess. But uh, it's not like Damon Sr. is super macho. I mean, he's got a long history of playing rather effete characters. You know, if you've seen In Living Color... Uh, or some of his movies from the 90s, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, it, it's uh, it just, I would imagine the people behind that show know that they've got something special there. That should be uh, the focus, at least to start out, ha- having those two together. And then uh, hopefully the uh, supporting cast will uh, win us over as well. And okay, that's yeah. Those those, those are all the uh, new shows that I've checked out so far. We've got another uh, one on the schedule c- premiering a little later. Aunt Beth also mentioned it in her message, and that's Saint Dennis Medical, a mockumentary set at a hospital, starring David Allen Greer and um, what's her name. Uh, Beverly Goldberg uh, herself, uh, Wendy McClendon Covey, among others. Uh, so that looks like it can it could be enjoyable. I think uh, maybe some of the writers and creators are also people I've uh, in, uh, who have worked on stuff I've created, uh, or, uh, stuff I've created, stuff I've enjoyed. Uh, yeah, Justin Spitzer is one of the creators, and I believe he's best known for Superstore. Also, uh, short-lived American Auto. Uh, yeah, so that's set to debut on NBC on November 12th, uh, so so maybe we'll uh, talk about that more later. Uh, yeah, so I think I, I've talked about it enough. I've also seen some movies recently. You know, it's October. I, I saw Terrifier 3 and Smile 2 in theaters, um, but I, I won't dive too deep into the, the scary stuff because we might actually have something Halloween-related coming soon so uh get ready for that gird your loins if need be and uh maybe save a few snickers and reese's peanut butter cups uh don't give them out all all to all the way to the trick-or-treaters you know have have some leftover candy on hand while you're uh, listening to um a an episode of that's entertainment that that might just be a little spooky so I'll I'll let you you speculate about what that might be. In the meantime, uh, if you've uh, liked to let me or Aunt Beth know what you think about Fall TV, you can uh, reach out to us. You can email us at that's entertainment podcast at gmail dot com. Uh, you can also uh, get in touch with us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter still. And uh, okay, happy uh, happy Halloween. Happy early Thanksgiving, uh, good luck Christmas shopping, and, and good luck with um, keeping track of all the TV shows that I, I'm sure you're watching. And oh, and you can support us on Patreon if you'd like. And uh, oh, and uh, one more thing: keep your remotes handy and your eyes open.